All right then, gang. The next thing I want to talk about is how we can fetch data in a Quick City app. For example, a list of blocks. And there's a couple of ways we can approach this. The first option is to fetch the data in the browser after we get the initial HTML page from the server. And then once we get a response, Quick could update the page to inject that data into it. Or we could fetch the data on the server. And once the data response comes back, Quick renders the HTML on the server and it sends it to the browser. And then the HTML already has the data injected into it. And this second approach is what we're gonna look at, fetching data on the server. So we wanna fetch the data for the homepage so that we can show maybe a list of blogs there. And the data itself could come from a variety of sources. It could be from a database or a third party API or whatever else. In our example, we're just gonna use a local JSON file which I've already created inside a data folder up here. So this JSON has a property inside it called blogs, which is an array of blog objects. And each blog object has an ID property, a title, and a content property. Now, what I'm gonna do is use a package called JSON server to wrap an API endpoint around this JSON file. And that allows us to send a fetch request to the endpoint to get the JSON data. So it's like we're simulating a request to some kind of API endpoint, right? If you've not got JSON server already installed on your computer, you can install it by going to a new terminal and typing npm install, then hyphen G, so it installs globally on your computer, and then JSON hyphen server and press enter to install it. Now, once you have done that, we can then just type JSON hyphen server, then a space, then hyphen W to watch a file, and then the path to that file, which in our case is gonna be dot forward slash data to go into the data folder, and then db.json. So it's gonna watch that file for us. And now you can see that we have an endpoint to fetch that blog's data from, cool. So now let's look at how to do that for the home component. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make a function which can run on the server to fetch us this data. We need to export this function, otherwise it won't work. And we also need to give it a specific name on get. The reason it's called on get is because we're handling what will be a get request. If we wanted to handle a post request, then we'd use on post for the function name. We're essentially just making an endpoint here on the server and it needs to know the type of that endpoint, whether it be for a get, post, put or delete request. And the function name tells it that. Anyway, we need to declare also the type of this function as well, which is a special type of function that Quick uses called a request handler. So we need to import that type request handler from Quick City as well. And you might be noticing, by the way, that some imports come from Quick City and some just from Quick. And this is a bit like if you have a Next.js app, some imports come from Next and some come from React. In this case, Quick City is the meta framework built on top of Quick that helps us to do things like routing and server endpoints. All right. Anyway. We can also specify the return type after this as well in angle brackets. Now the return type is gonna be an array of blog objects, but we don't have anything in this file describing those blog objects. So now let's make a new interface to describe those blog objects that we'll be getting back. So inside this interface, I want a property called ID, which is gonna be a string. And then also we need a title, which is a string. And then finally the content, which is a string that matches up to what we have inside the JSON file. All right, so that's the type and we can pass it through right here, blog data, but then it's an array of blog data, so square brackets. All right, so we set that equal then to an asynchronous function. And it's inside this function, we go out and fetch the data itself. So what I'm gonna do is just log a message right here to say fetching the data just so that later on we can see that this runs on the server and not in the browser, fetching the data. Okay, now under this, we can just do a fetch request. So I'm gonna say const response is equal to await, and then it's fetch, and then the endpoint, which is in the terminal, this thing right here, so copy that, and oops, I've canceled out of that process, so let me run it again. But I think I did copy it. Paste it in here, yep. Okay, so we have the response and from that we want the JSON data. So we'll say const data is equal to await response.json. This is just standard fetch stuff. Okay, so then finally we can return the data. All right, so that's the function created up here to actually go out and fetch the data on the server. 
So we have the function ready now, which is fetching the data on the server, but how do we then use it inside the component itself? Well, we use a hook called use endpoints, and that needs to be imported from Quick City. And this hook allows us to use the endpoint that we've defined up here to fetch the blogs. It returns us a value as well, which we're going to call blogs data. So we also need to specify the type of data that we're going to be getting back from the endpoint, which is an array of blog data objects, right? So this use endpoint hook tells Quick that we want to use an endpoint to fetch data on the server. So it's going to fire that endpoint up here, which will then fetch the data and return it to us. Now, there is one thing to note. This use endpoint hook can be triggered on either the server or on the client in the browser. If we send a request in the browser to this website and land on this page initially, right, the component is first rendered on the server and the use endpoint hook is fired then on the server. But if we land on a different page initially when we first come to the website and then navigate on the front end to this page using some kind of link, then this use endpoint hook is then going to fire in the browser. Now, whether it fires in the browser or on the server is of little consequence to us as a developer, but it's worth knowing because it does affect how quickly the data can be used in the template. So you can think of this returned blog's data value as a bit like a promise. When the data has been fetched, then it has a resolved state. While it's being fetched, it has a pending state and it can't be used in the template until we have that resolved state. So the way we output this to the template is by using a component called resource. Now I'm going to use that resource component right here in the template, which is self-closing, and it also needs to be imported from Quick as well. So this resource component has a few props that we need to add to it. The first one is the value prop, which is set to whatever resource value we want to output. In our case, that's the blog data that is returned from use endpoints. The second one is an on pending prop, which is a function that returns a template to render while the fetch is being made and it's in its pending state. So in here, we could just output a loading message inside a div or something. And then the third one is an on resolved prop, which fires a function once the fetch is fully resolved and we have the data. And this function returns a template we can show when we have that data. We also pass that data through as a prop into this function, which we can call blocks. So now we just need to return a template here for when we have the data and we want to output it. And remember, if this index page was the first page we requested on the website from the server, all of this happens on the server before it reaches the browser. But if we navigated to this page from another one on the site, then this stuff inside the component right here is executed in the browser. But the onGet function is always, always fired on the server and just returns data to us. Anyway, let's flesh out this template. So then what I'm going to do, first of all, is a div inside here to surround all of the blogs. And this is going to have a class of blogs as well. So we can style this shortly. Then inside this div, we want to output a few things, right? Now, we need to cycle through the blogs. Remember, this is an array of blog objects. So we can cycle through something by saying blogs to make sure we have a value and double ampersand blogs dot map. So if we get no blogs back, we're never going to map through them. Okay. So we're going to map through them and we're going to take each individual blog as we cycle through each one and return a template for each blog object. So for each one, we want a div and let's close that off. First of all, each div is then going to have a class. In fact, we don't need to give this a class. But what we do need to give it is a key, much like React. And this value must be unique for each individual blog. Now, we do have an ID property on each one, which is unique. So we can say blog.id. And then inside here, we'll do an H3 for the title of the blog. So blog.title, like so. And then below that, we'll do a paragraph tag. And we're going to output the content. So blog.content. But we don't want to output all of the content, maybe just the first 50 characters. So we can say dot slice. And we'll say from zero to 50. All right. And then after that, we want to add dot, dot, dot. So it kind of implies that the blog continues. Now, later on, we're going to click on this blog to go to a blog details page, but we'll leave it there for now. Now, what I do also want to do is go to the global CSS down here so that we can add some styles for this. 
So you can see right here, the blocks, and we're giving the whole thing a margin of 40 pixels. Remember, this is this div that surrounds all of the blocks. We display it as grid, and then this is the grid template column. So there's gonna be three columns of content. We're gonna have three blocks in a row, basically. And the gap between each column and row is 20 pixels, okay? Now, we're gonna test this out in a second, but first of all, I'm getting an error over here in the index, and I think that's coming from the imports at the top. Yes, it is. Okay, so there's a few things here. First of all, these we don't need anymore. That was from before when we were playing around with state, so we can get rid of those. And then we have this warning right here. Ah, okay, so this right here, this is a type, and this is a type, but this isn't. So I don't know what's going on here. We need to say type right here, and then remove use endpoint from this. And then we just need to import use endpoint from Quick City itself. So it looks like this, use endpoint, because this is a function, whereas these are types. So they need to be imported as a type, and this is just a function, okay? So that's what it should be like. Now we can preview this in the browser. So let's go to the home page over here, and you can see now we get all of these blogs, awesome. And if we refresh the page, you can see we're loading them straight away, and that's all working. So we're grabbing the data on the server and then returning that, putting it in the template, cycling through those blogs, and we're outputting it in the browser right here.